So it's Saturday, August 9th. It's pre-evening. It's pre-evening. I just got home from work. Uh, I'll give you a quickie update and let's have a cold beer and see what we're going to get done today. Sure. They swarmed Monday. Excuse me. They swarmed Monday. I put them in. I split the boxes up Tuesday of this week. And here, Saturday morning, crack of dawn, I was out there checking on them on the first time since Tuesday. We have a confirmed queen in hive number two. We're going to call the swarmed hive hive number two. And I did find the queen. It was really early in the morning and I was kind of, I don't want to say I was in a hurry, but I was moving with a purpose because I had to go to work and my work is uh, 53 miles away from my house. So it takes me, on a weekend actually did all right. It took me just over an hour to get there, but that's neither here nor there. Anyhow, the uh, my quick review of these guys, I did find a queen in here. Uh, she's a beautiful golden brown with no stripes on her long narrow body she's totally hot wow, chicka, blam, blam. and she's back and she's running around like mad and that made me very happy and i was very careful with the frame i found her on to put her back and reassemble the hive and we're going to call that one good so hive number one or the original hive i did not see a queen in there this morning that doesn't mean she's not in there it just means i wasn't able to identify her in the uh the low light of early dawn and it's quite possible she's actually still off on her mating flight. They usually take between three to five days, depending on the availability of drones. And uh, she may or may not be back yet. She's probably out. Both hives are very, very active. Both hives have, uh, have a lot of honey. They have a lot of pollen in store, but they're alarmingly low on their brood. So let's take a walk into the shop. Set down my beer right out of the fridge. We're going to take a look at these two tools right now so I can kind of clear my bench of them. So I can kind of clear my bench. If you remember, this is the Makita grinder that my friend Troy sent me in the box of goodies, unboxing the goodies, and I can't even give you a model number on it because that's what the data plate looks like. But we're going to crack this open and see what's going on with that, and I'll show you my latest tool acquisition. Cheers. When you used to go to parties, you know, or when you're at parties and you're drinking uh, beer out of a can, you know, some guys will turn their little pop tab one way, some will turn the other. But my bro John uh, used to put a dent right here. He'd put a little dent. And that way, and I always ask him, you know, I, I always ask him, but I did ask him, I'm like, why do you always do that? Why do you always put a little dent there? And he goes, well, two things. First of all, I always know it's my beer. You can pick that beer out from a mile away. It's got a dent. And secondly, when you pick it up and it's dark, or maybe you're a little buzz and you're not paying attention, you know right where the drink hole is. Right where the drink hole is every time your thumb goes into that dent. I'm just saying, John Hurst, I know you're gone from this planet, buddy, but uh, you know, certain things you do and certain things you've done uh, still live on. So let me enjoy my cold beer and show you what we've got going on today. So my first project was to see what's going on with this benchtop grinder. And uh, this was gonna be a, a garbage throwaway. Uh, or recycle or whatever it was going my friend Tim my buddy Tim had this and I think it's kind of a, a, a combination of home built and some commercially produced products obviously this table here is, is home built or is uh, excuse me obviously this working t surface here is not home built the the shroud is home built and actually that's probably a problem I'm gonna have to fix that. It looks like the little tab here is coming soldered. And everything else just looks like plywood and a block of wood. Got a regular household switch <laughs> for on and off. I don't know if it works, I'm assuming it does. It's got a little spit out thing here. I could fix that. Uh, and this is an old school oiling motor that you've gotta put a couple drops of oil in here to oil the bushings. It looks very well built. I haven't plugged it in to see if it works. I'm assuming it does work. Tim didn't tell me that it didn't work. It has a 3 8 inch thick steel flywheel here too. Look at it, it's 3 8 of an inch. I think it's eight or nine inches across. Eight inches across, so it's an eight inch flywheel. Yeah, that's 3 8 of an inch thick. So it's, it gets, I'm sure it's gonna get, if it works, it's gonna get quite a bit of inertia. It actually looks like it's rolling pretty good. And I bet I'd have trouble slowing it down. So let's plug it in to see if it works, and then if it does, we'll put a couple drops of oil in it. I've got to make some plugs for these oiling holes. There's an oil hole for the front bushing and for the back bushing. But before I go through any of that, I think my sure my fingers are away. I don't know which way the switch goes, it's not marked. I'm gonna to have to change this plug. I'm likely gonna change the cords on it, but let's see. Oop. 
something works. Had a dim light there for a minute. Okay, ready, stand back. That's pretty cool. That's got a pretty good roll off time too. Look at that. So let's uh, bust the torch out and I'm going to make some little wooden plugs and we'll come right back to you. Take a look and see what we have going on here. Look at that. <clears throat> One of the power cores that's leading to the switch cartridge. The common side is out. And actually, how well you can see that the hot side has several strands. It looks like this is very tight. The way the power cord comes in, this is the stress relief. Maybe the stress relief didn't work. Um, maybe this tool was pulled by the cord one too many times and it took all the slack that may or may not have been in this power cord took it all out and you can see probably half this I'm gonna pull this switch pack out but probably half this wire here half the wires the small braided wires are broken the more wires that break and don't make contact the hotter this connection is gonna get every time you're hogging down on this thing I'm assuming the machine still works. We can give her a try. Let's give her a try. I'll put you back on the tripod. Everybody take it easy. And go. Wait, no. And go. Oh, I'm scared. And go. Holy shit, that thing's got some turk. Oh, buddy, <laughs> I think this, that thing's a beast. Let me, let me fix those power wires. I'll be right back. <laughs> so what I did to initiate the repair is I spent about five or six minutes looking for new crimped eyes. These little eyes. I thought I had the crimped eyes. Um, I couldn't find it readily. 
and I wasn't going to spend a lot of time looking for it. So what I took was I took a pair of side cutters or diagonal cutters or dikes, whatever you want to call them, and I split, where is it? I split the uh, crimped eye loop and I cleaned out all the old wiring knowing that when I, if I were to recrimp these things, because crimp connections are single use deals, if I were just to simply recrimp them on the ends of new wires, you know, I cut the wires tight, took off another three quarters of an inch or so of this insulation, I knew that they wouldn't hold very tight because these things are only single use. So I saw, ended up soldering them in there. I tinned, uh, I flexed and tinned the inside of the crimp connection, flexed and tinned the wire, uh, which means I dipped them in soldering flux here, and then I used uh, tinning is, is the process of, of getting solder and I mean doesn't everybody have three different kinds of solders they're all depends on what I have to do but I ended up using this small electronics this small diameter electronic solder rosin core and you heat it up where are we so we're not out of focus and you get a nice layer of solder or tinning on the eye loop and a nice layer of solder a nice coat of solder soldered into the wired connection you make the you make the joint by crimping it and then you heat it all together and it all mates so it is uh, it is not going to go anywhere and I've left as you can tell here I've left some room so these won't have such a strain Oops, sorry guys so they won't have such a strain on these connections and in theory we should get this thing to work I can put it all back together and call it a day so let me put you back on the tripod let's plug it in see if it works <laughs> <laughs> 